Hi, this is Gleb. Welcome to the fourth video in my Refactoring Cypress API test series. In this video, I will look at this user's pack that checks how we can update a user bio. Uh, we're using update user several times and we confirm that the ID is correct, the token is there, the email is correct. Then we update the new um, username, we set the new username and we update uh, it once, check um, that the status is 200, we update it again and check that the response sends the user with the expected new username. Okay, let's get to it. I'm gonna open Cypress, Electron, click on the user spec and we have five tests, they are passing, excellent. What I'm gonna do right away, I'm gonna watch for file changes so that anytime I save the spec file, it reruns the test. By the way, this test is flaky. I think that token expires, so sometimes the test fails, but let's leave it aside for now. Let's look at the last two tests. Inside update username, ah, sweet. So I'm gonna focus just on these two tests. I'm gonna move it to the right, and I'm gonna just look at them. Notice what we do right here. We have the same new name, we update the user, we check the status code, and we do the same thing, and then we check the response username. These tests seem to be doing just checking of the response. And this is obvious when you look at the name of a test. It's the same name. So why can't we check the status and then check the response in the same test after the same API call? We can. Um, so I'm gonna comment out the second test and right now we have a response and usually if I'm checking property I would say should have property status with a value 200. Let's see if this passes. It does pass. And most of Cypress assertions don't change the subject so I suspect if I have a response I might continue working and for example say it's body user should have property username and equal to new name. And unfortunately this doesn't work. Should have property, even with the name of property and the value, actually yields a value of property, unfortunately. And you can see that if you go to the console and you click on the failed say its command and notice that the current subject is 200. So that's the status value. Okay, if we cannot use should have property, what else can we do? Well, there is another check called should deep include. And here you can provide an object with properties that you know. So in this case, we know that this response should include status 200. And then it includes other properties like body, which includes a property user. So we can get uh, the user object. So we replaced should have property with should deep include and we continue working on the same subject and can get the user and confirm the username. Perfect. We removed one test. Let's look at the first three tests and see if we can modify them the same way with we checking the status and then we checking the token and then we checking the email property. This all seems to be doable. So we're gonna confirm that the response deep includes status 200 and then we are getting again the user right and then what do we do when we have a user object and we're checking its id its token and email okay so that's the same assertion deep include and now instead of a single property we can list everything we know about the object the id the token is cypress env token and the email is wherever we have in the variable. Okay, and we can remove all these tests. Let's see if this passes. And it does, perfect. Second refactoring, a look at how we call this um, page object method update user. We have to pass placeholders just so we can pass bio in position number three. I don't think it's a good property or a good way of doing this. So what I will do instead, notice we have image, username, bio, email, password, and user put name that updates only the properties that are not empty. 
why don't we just pass a user object and just uh, use it in the API call. So right now it will fail because we're not, um, did it fail? Um, are we never, in this test we actually never check the body set correctly, it's, it's, it's fine. Notice we are passing empty and so everything stays the same. Uh, we probably want to confirm that the buyer is what we passed. Okay, so we want to pass a buyer as well right here. Okay, and now it fails because, well, we're using this incorrectly, but now let's fix it. So all we need to do, we're going to pass the property that we do know, the buyer. Okay, this is a token problem. That's fine. Okay, so notice how simple this test looks and we can update this test and in this test it's user name right with a value a variable new name this token uh, expiration is annoying okay and the last refactoring is using size park again notice we have no idea what's inside the object right um doesn't really show how all the properties um of um, the object that we expect using deep include notice it only shows um i think the last one uh, all right here notice we're checking id token email bio but the assertion unfortunately only shows the last one so we're gonna install size pack and we're gonna import spark from size pack we can remove variables we're not using and right here we can say instead of deep include we can say shoot spark and then a call and we can even leave this one here so now this shows all the properties that we're validating. And because we use Spark, we don't have to use previous uh, assertion and say its command because we can do the following. We can say should Spark status 200 and then body user, right? And all these properties go inside the user object. Perfect. Easy and simple and elegant. So this is my refactoring for the user spec. We removed all unnecessary specs. We combine them all into one. We fix how we call the page object method. And we're using size spark to validate everything and show the results, successful, unsuccessful, all in the Cypress command log. I'm gonna link the code repository in the description of this video.